Like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. The Apollo 11 moon landing was the first time humans ever walked on the moon and has to be one of our greatest achievements. The iconic pictures and audio from the mission will forever be a part of humankind's collective consciousness. But there are a handful of secrets from the mission that are not discussed enough. Here are 10 secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. Before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. 10. Buzz Aldrin took Holy Communion on the Moon. When Apollo 11's Eagle Lunar Module landed on the Moon on the 20th of July in 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had to wait a little before they stepped outside, as per their orders. Their mission required of them to take a breather before the big event, so to make use of this time, Aldrin decided to do something unexpected, something no man had ever tried before. As he was alone and overwhelmed by nervousness and excitement, he took part in the first Christian sacrament ever performed on the moon, which was a rite of Christian communion. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it. It really works. 9. Astronauts train for microgravity by walking sideways. How do you even prepare to send someone to a place no one has ever stepped foot on? NASA in the 1960s decided to do this by creating simulations that emulated scenarios or things of what the astronauts could expect to encounter out in space. Armstrong and Aldrin practiced collecting samples on fake indoor moonscapes. Armstrong practiced taking off and landing in the lunar landing training vehicle in Houston. And to mimic walking in the lower gravity atmosphere of the moon, astronauts were suspended sideways by straps and then walked along a tilted wall. NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey even blasted out craters at Cinder Lake, Arizona to create a landscape that matched part of the moon's surface because, as you all know, practice makes one perfect. 8. The first words. Today we're here to clear up quite a big misconception. When Neil Armstrong took his first step on the moon, what he really meant to say was that's one small step for a man. There have been arguments over whether a bad radio connection caused the misquote or if Armstrong had a case of universal stage fright and skipped over the tiny yet important word. Speaking of those iconic first words, we know that Armstrong gets all the credit for saying the first words on the moon, but that's one small step wasn't the first sentence spoken on the moon. Bob Berman, who interviewed Buzz Aldrin years ago, tells a different story. He says that Aldrin was actually the first man to speak on the moon, but his quote wasn't quite as charming. When they touched down, he simply said, okay, engines stop. 7. Armstrong was an excellent pilot. Although it seems like it should be a good thing, Armstrong landed the eagle a tad too softly on the surface of the moon. It is said that Armstrong was supposed to cut the engines when the lander was a few feet from the surface. NASA scientists built the lander with legs that would crumple upon landing to absorb the shock. Since Armstrong was such an incredible pilot, the lander's legs never crumpled. Thus, that led to the astronauts having to exit the lander several feet higher than intended, which means that that first small step was actually more of a leap. 6. The Soviets tried to cover up their efforts So it seems that the United States was not the only country that wanted to show its power and standing by landing the first humans on the moon. The Soviet Union was also itching to complete the feat, but once U.S. astronauts reached there first, the Soviets tried to put a veil over their attempts. It was written in the Soviet newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda by a journalist that at first secrecy was necessary so that no one would overtake them, but later, when they were overtaken, they had to maintain secrecy so that no one knew they'd been overtaken. 5. Scientists were worried about space germs infecting Earth 
Once Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins had finished risking their lives for the advancement of the human race, they had the added pleasure of being confined in planetary protection quarantine once they'd returned. As humans had never been to the moon before, NASA scientists were not entirely sure that some deadly plague-induced germ hadn't taken a ride to Earth on the astronauts. As soon as their re-entry capsule splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th, the three were transferred to a mobile quarantine facility inside which they were transported to NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory at Johnson Space Center, where they had access to a larger quarantine facility until they were released on the 10th of August, 1969. 4. President Kennedy didn't really care about the moon. In front of the public, President John F. Kennedy had pledged with such conviction that the United States would set sail on this new sea because there's new knowledge to be gained and new rights to be won, and they must be won and used for the progress of all people. But secretly recorded tapes of Kennedy's discussions would later reveal that in private, JFK was not as interested in space exploration as he was in winning against the Soviets. In a 1962 meeting with advisors and NASA administrators, he confessed that he was not that interested in space, but he was interested in winning the Cold War. Just a few months after JFK's inauguration, the Soviet Union had sent the first man into space. Kennedy asked his vice president how the U.S. could one-up the Soviets. He replied that one of the best ways to show their sheer power was by sending a manned mission to the moon. 3. Civil Rights Activists Not everyone was a fan of the U.S. effort to land people on the moon. A few days before the launch of Apollo 11, a group of activists, led by civil rights leader Ralph Abernathy, stood outside the gates of the Kennedy Space Center. They had with them two mules and a wooden wagon to show the contrast between the gleaming white Saturn V rocket and families who were afflicted by poverty. Amid the intense build-up to the launch, the NASA administrator, Thomas Paine, came out to talk to the protesters. After the two leaders talked for a while under the soft rain, Thomas said he hoped Abernathy would push his hostility and activism aside for a bit to bring together the people to laud the achievement that was to take place. Thomas Paine then arranged to have members of the group attend the next day's launch from a VIP viewing area. Ralph Abernathy prayed for the safety of the astronauts and said he was just as proud as anyone at what had been accomplished. And with that, it's now time for today's subscriber pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber. If you come across a photo online and you want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it on a future video. 2. Moon Dirt Smells One of the biggest questions the NASA team planning the Apollo 11 moon landing was facing was what would the moon's surface be like? Would the lander's legs touch down on solid ground or sink into something soft? The surface turned out to be solid, but the actual surprise was that the moon had a smell. Moon soil is extremely sticky and hard to brush off, so when Armstrong and Aldrin returned to the lunar module and pressurized it again, moon dirt that had clung to the men's suits entered the cabin and began to give off a smell. The astronauts said that it had a burnt smell, a bit like wet fireplace ash, or like the air after a fireworks show. Scientists never got the chance to experience just what the crew smelled. While moon soil and rock samples were sent to labs in sealed containers, once they were opened up back on Earth, the smell was gone. 1. President Nixon didn't believe the mission would be successful. While President Kennedy had brought the nation together to land a man on the moon, he was assassinated before he could see the Apollo mission complete his vision. That undeniable honor fell to President Richard Nixon, who had been elected in 1968. As he was watching Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin take their first steps on the moon, his anxiety was at an all-time high. If anything went wrong, he would have to face the rage of America over the loss of billions of tax dollars as well as the death of two astronauts. His staff had even prepared a statement to be read in case the worst happened and organized a priest to commit their souls to the deep a lot like a burial at sea. Watching Apollo 11 live from the moon, the president could only hope he wouldn't have to read it, and fortunately for him, he didn't have to. The men who had traveled more than 200,000 miles to the moon 
and then stepped foot on an uncharted territory had survived, and the United States would go on to finish six crewed missions that landed a total of 12 astronauts on the moon from 1969 to 1972. Sounds like a win to us. And that concludes our list of the 10 secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. Let us know in the comments section below if you previously knew about any of these secrets. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon.